Hello everyone, how's it going? It is me, Jack here, and welcome to a brand new season of the Charlton Athletic Football Manager 2020 save here on the JCR YouTube channel. It's episode number eight of the series, and it is, as I say, a brand new season. Life in League One starts now as we prepare and play our first game of the League One season away against Peter Brett United. There's quite a lot to show you in this episode, so it is going to be slightly longer than your traditional Charlton Athletic video. So we're going to get right into it. And I think first thing we're going to do is transfers because we have done quite a bit of business. Um, I think this was necessary because of the um, well, relegation uh, taking place, of course. Um, First of all, I'll show you the finances screen. They are looking very differing. Uh, the owners decided to just plough a little bit of money into the club just to help us financially. So this is why the overall balance is looking good. However, I do expect that just to deplete as the season goes on. So, of course, we need the backing from the chairman in order to keep the club competitive. We had a decent bit of money, though. We had around about one million, one and a half million pounds sort of to play with. Um, and we've utilised the low market, the free... Uh, the free agents list as well of course we had done some business already if you look back at the previous episode we had brought in Dominic Samuel from Blackburn, Renato Tapia from the Eredivisie and Magnani from Sassuolo for uh, fees as well but we still do have the Joe Gomez um, sell on clause which I am still trying to hold out because I'm hoping maybe that Liverpool will sell him but as I've done previous saves um, I don't really think that uh, Liverpool sell him. So I was, I've was i been reviewing this quite a lot and debating whether I should cash out on this clause. And last season, when the season finished, it got us about as high as, I think, 12 million. So I think I'm, I'm thinking of just holding on for maybe another season, see um, if that release clause does go up. And then hoping we go up this season, we might look to cash out on it and try and build... Uh, a decent enough squad to challenge uh, and be competitive in the championship. We will have to see. I will keep an eye on it and uh, you'll definitely be told when um, that has occurred and we've cashed out. <clears throat> but as you can see, he's valued at £58 million uh, so, and he's only 23, so he's still got plenty of years ahead of him. So, without further ado, let's just dive in to the um, transfer business. Last season, we spent around £2.6 million, mostly on, of course, Wittick and Mallon, the rest of them being loan players. This season, we have brought in eight players. I'll show you the sales that we've done. I'm, I'm not sure whether I actually showed you or not. Uh, we did sell George Lapsell. That was, um, I think, if you look back at the previous episodes, that is there. Um, we sold him to Ibar. Um, and he somehow landed in Vittoria. I don't know how that's happened. But we sold him for 175k just to literally get rid of him. I looked at him and I thought, I don't. he's not really a player that I, I fancy keeping a, a hold of. He didn't really play for us last season. So it was good to get him just away from the club. Um, and as well as that, of course, you know the free transfers of Lyle Taylor and Tamar Hamed. We loaned out uh, Darren Prattley. He's 35. I do believe his contract expires this season. Um, and he will just be let go of, to be fair, the journeyman uh, midfielder. He didn't even, I don't think, play for us last season. Oh, he did. He played three games for us last season. Um, yeah, I'm just expecting to release him at the end of the season. But he is on loan at Notts County. As I said, I've already showed you the business we've done with Magnani, Samuel and Tapia. So let's have a look at some of the other pieces of business uh, I have done. I'm very happy with this window. Um, first one I'll show you is Herbie Kane. We've signed him on a permanent transfer for £625,000. He spent the majority uh, of the games last season played with Hull City, who obviously finished bottom of the championship season, similar to that of real life. However, he's a very exciting prospect, valued at around £4.4 million. He's a player that can play the deep lying role um, defensively but he is going to be utilised as a box to box midfielder for us this season he has got the attributes to uh, well to play well in that position he is uh, that sort of uh, player I think 
and I uh, hope he can be very good for us. And very importantly as well, he is a homegrown talent. So that will be extremely important for us in the future. Um, another piece of business that we did uh, through using uh, spending actual money is this youngster here, Tommaso Barbieri. Um, another Italian player that we've brought into the club. Uh, he was originally placed into the under-18s list, but he's actually going to be a starter for us um, this season. Of course, he'll be battling um, Adam Matthews for that role this season. But you look at the stats of them both, con considering Barbieri is only 17, he's got some very, very good attributes compared to Matthews. You can see slightly better defensively. He's not as quick as what um, Matthews is, but you look at them and I think it is worth giving Barbieri game time this season and he can attempt to overtake the, uh, the experienced right back Matthews uh, for, a, for the first team role. Um, and we brought him in for £245,000 from Serie C. One other permanent piece of business we did is bringing in Adana Traore. <laughs> it is not the uh, Adara Traore that um, you might have thought that we'd bring in. It's not the quick winger from Wolverhampton. I don't know whether actually they're related. I'm not just saying that because this Adama Traore is from Mali. I've not actually checked this. Are they both? No, they're not. I know I think there is another Adama Traore that um, the Spanish player is linked with. But this is the former player from Monaco. Um, last season, he spent um, a bit of time in League One again, playing for FC Metz. Didn't have the best spell, but he's playing for League One for us this season. And I think he's going to be an absolute quality player for us. Can play the deep line, play make a role. And he's got some very, very good attributes for that. I like that technique that he's got about him. Decent bit of work rate on him as well. Good first touch, I think. For their value as well, eight and a half million. If we were to sell him on, we might even get around five million pounds, which would be absolutely fantastic. He is 25, so he's still got a bit of time to progress. But the reports suggest that he is a good player for most championship sides. So hopefully he can uh, continue on that bit of form. As well as that, we looked at the loan market. Of course, it was going to be difficult. Um, in terms of the striker department, with us losing our two best goal scorers last season. Hemed and Taylor. We've lost 32 goals from the pair of them. And we've tried to replace that uh, in League One with bringing in this first Lord signing, Jordan Hugill from West Ham. Last season, he was in the Championship playing for Queen's Park Rangers and he got 10 goals for them. And if he got 10 in the Championship, who knows how many he can get in League One for us this season. We're paying, I believe it's all of his wages. No, no it's not all of his wages. We're paying 14 grand of his wages and um, but he is definitely good championship quality so he's another one of them players that should be in the division above but when i look at his stats in the pressing forward role he is a finisher of the ball very brave a physical striker will definitely work for the team so i'm looking forward to seeing how he goes for us this season hopefully uh, in the future partnered with federico bonazzoli this was a player that i was looking at actually for a permanent deal I do believe that they've taken him off the transfer list since this loan signing. They only wanted about 900k from him, so he was definitely within the transfer budget. However, wanted around 20,000 pounds, 30,000 on the wages. He will be in the advanced forward role. Again, got some very good attributes, very similar finishing to Jordan Hugill. Good bit of work rate, good stamina, decent acceleration. He could be a very, very good goal scorer for us this season, especially when his potential is that of a good Premier League striker. I'm hoping him and Jordan Hugo will be a very good partnership for us in League One this season. The Bookies have actually got us uh, in the season preview to win the uh, League One title on the first time of asking with uh, Hull City to finish in second. They've got us two to five um, in terms of getting promoted. So they understand that we've got a very strong squad for this division. And that is my aim this season. We just need to get out of this division as soon as possible. So the aim, obviously, is to get out of the division. Um, as well as that, I forgot to mention, we did get handed a new contract. At the last episode, I said that our contract was literally running out um, at the end of uh, June. 
they've given us a contract just another year's deal to see how we do and i think if we don't get promoted with the club this season then the job could be on the line the club vision has obviously been updated um due to the uh situation regarding relegation we've got to get promotion by winning the league so that's a big target by them and of course as well we are going to be partaking in the leasing.com they want us to reach the third round of that trophy and as well the fourth round and third round of the fa cup and carabao i think i realized as well last season i didn't show you any cup games at all that was how important the um the championship was last season unfortunately we weren't able to keep it up so we might play potentially a few uh cup games this season um and then from that we've just got to attempt to remain in the championship the next season become established and then aim for top half finishes since then manager performance is positive it's a c plus they are concerned regarding the finances of bringing in jordan kugel but i think overall they are very happy with the transfer activity that has taken place here at the club and i'm very happy with it as well we're still very much got plenty of uh, wages available at our disposal um but yeah i think these these group of players are definitely capable of uh, getting us promoted this season we play peterborough united uh, in today's episode the first game of the season and their manager gary megson was a former coach of ours last season i brought him into my coaching staff and peter approached him right at the end of the season actually uh, for this season and it's unbelievable of course the first game he would play in myself the pre-season fixtures didn't actually go too badly our only defeat was against uh, Celtic we lost that game by two goals to one at the beginning of pre-season however a very notable victory against a strong Wolverhampton side Bonazzoli getting two goals and Johnny Williams uh, scoring in the 65th minute to win us the game which is very, very important indeed. Um, I don't think there's really anything else to show you. I've done all the business. Um, dynamics of the squad, they're quite happy. A number of players have, have, have had bids for them. Um, I got close to selling Deji or Shalaja because we've got quite a number of centre-backs. But if we decide to go to five of the back formation, then I suppose we do need uh, centre-backs there. Jake Fortikaski was disappointed not to go uh, as well to reading i do think he's a he's a decent league one player this uh this lad he, he played a number of championship games for us last season but it was mainly off the bench he, he wasn't really a starter for us however i think in this division he will be a good player and um, the only thing i'm a little bit concerned about is the fact we've got no team leaders i, I saw this however i'm hoping tapia can end up getting himself in there and also herbie kane I don't know where Kane is at the moment, but he's got some decent attributes uh, for, a for a potential captaincy in the future. There he is in the influential players. I do, I can see Kane going up there as he has got some decent leadership qualities. Um, I don't know if there's a way for me to show you, actually. Yeah, captain is uh, Jason Pierce with Tom Lockyer as the vice captain. I have given him a contract, I believe, as well. Yeah, uh, hopefully we will extend that as it runs out this season. Um, I think I've rambled on for quite enough time now. Let's just get underway this first game of the new season, season two. We are sticking with this formation. However, I am making some alterations like I did last season, lowering the tempo, uh, playing a little bit more disciplined. Um, but let's just run you through the team. It's going to be Phillips in goal, a back four of Matthews rather than Barbieri just yet. Lockyer, Oshelaja and Wittock completing the defence. Tapia making his debut similar with Adama Traore, uh, Matt Smith completing the midfield, Johnny Williams in behind, Aniki who's starting in the advanced forward role after his good quality at the end of last season um, and Bonazzoli. Hugh Gill is a little bit, he's just come back from an injury so I'm going to have to work his match sharp as he might make an appearance but on the bench as well we've got Amos, Barbieri, Sart, Herbie Kane to come on, uh, Malin still at the club as well, Oztuma and Hugh Gill. Um, we have got Eric Garcia who's at the Olympics at the moment. He comes back next week and Magnani is just coming back from his injury so he will hopefully be in the first team picture soon as well. But it's the 1st of August. Let's submit the team. And that's actually, um, it'll be the 1st of August in which obviously you saw the Saturday episode. I hope you enjoyed 
the run of uh, the, well, the relegation scrap. It, of course, didn't end the way I wanted it to. But we try this season to get this club promoted. And already we are greeted with a Gary Megson style of play, a 4-5-1 formation. Ivan Tony, the lone striker. They've got a decent bit of experience there with George Boyd, the captain at left wing. Um, what do we tell the players here for this first game? We actually lost, didn't we, to Peterborough, I think, last season. That's why that message is popping up there. I'm just going to tell them, go out there and give the fans their money's worth. We'll tell them all I have faith. Get out there and make a difference. Let's see how Aniki can do, partnered with a different striker this season, Bonazzoli. We're sticking with long throws, as you can see as well. The highlight immediately showing us that. Tapia loses the ball. Cooper clears it. As far as Tom Lockyer. I think uh, teams aiming for promotion this season, you've got to look at the two teams coming down. Um, I forgot to show you the, two, the three teams that came up. I think Bradford City was one of them. I can't remember. Maybe Gillingham might have been one of the other ones. But um, I think this season, you know, Sunderland, I think, are still in the, the, the league this season. Ipswich, I believe, might be in it as well. But, you know, Hull City are a, are a big team in, the, in League One this season. As well as Charlton. And uh, yeah, they're definitely going to be looking for promotion. This highlight continues with Christy Pym on the ball, finding Butler. And a hoof ball over the top. Ivan Tony gets it. And it's a bit of a blunder there by Phillips, who attracted a lot of attention in the summer from various championship clubs. And that is not the start that we had in mind here in the championship. I need to watch this back. Butler lofts a ball forward, Tony gets it and Phillips does make a connection with the ball however, the power of that and that the ball went into the back of the net I just want to show you quickly, yeah, Sunderland and Ipswich are both in the uh, in the division, however that is not the start I did have in mind, we went with the lower sort of mentality because oh, sorry, the lower tempo because we're playing uh, Peterborough United away from home, a tricky fixture however, the ball has gone in Goodness me, Deji Oshalaja scoring his first ever Charlton goal there, as it said on the bottom of the screen. It's took him just over a season. Life in League One is helping him immensely. And what is Christy Pym doing there? He's just run out, tried to punch it, and the physicality of the centre back means that we take, well, we equalise, we don't take the lead. However, there's a similar goal going to happen here again. Matthews, Eniki gets it. No, he don't. Tapia picks it up on the loose ball. Adama finding Matthews. Whips it into the box. Bonazzoli just heads the ball over. Lively start here from both teams. And we're definitely getting a foothold in this game. However, I say that Dembele whipping a ball at the box. And Ivan Tony heads the ball clear. Over the bar. 20 minutes in. One apiece. Shrewsbury leading. So are Wickham as well. You never know, there could be a team just like that this season that you just don't expect to be up there and all of a sudden they are. But um, as I say, it's vital that we can uh, do well this season. As a ball is placed it back into the area, Matthews picks it up again. He's been very uh, lively here as Smith hammers it into the back of the net. The low knee from Manchester City, I believe. No, is it Manchester City or Leicester City? It's one of the two. Fires it in. And we take the lead the first time in this game. What a ball in from Adam Matthews to pick out the open Matt Smith, who was just left unmarked towards the edge of the area. And it is a beautiful, exquisite finish from the young centre mid. Where is he from again? I think it actually is Man City, isn't it? Yeah, it's Manchester City. Phenomenal strike from him. And we lead away from home in this match. Can we hold on? in this first half Hull City take the lead against AFC Wimbledon it's uh, we lead at half time um, I think I'm going to say I think we can do a little bit better lads to be fair attacking wise it's you know we're, we're being a little bit quiet it's more the defence that are doing it, uh, anything Matthews has been really really good with two assists Very important that we get victories early on here. Of course, it was difficult for us at, uh, last season in the championship to get goals, uh, well, get victories. It took us a while. It would be brilliant if we could uh, win this first game of the season as we have a ball, a free kick. Now, Wittock 
on the left-hand side. Oh, I think Tapia hits the post. It's a scramble. Christy Pym able to pick up. No, he's not. Oshelaja gets it back. It's Chucks Aniki who strikes it. And the ball goes very high and very, very wide indeed. That was a, a goal mouth scramble. I think Tapia headed it. Um, and unfortunately, it did not go in. 70 minutes in. We are going to make a couple of changes. Bonazzoli, I'm going to place at the advanced forward role. And we'll bring on Jordan Hugill at that role for just 20 minutes to see how this uh, partnership can go get creative lads um i believe we've got a game midweek against oxford so i'm going to bring on us tuma and i am going to take off a dama triore as well for stevie mallon let's just uh just rotate a little bit now as we uh continue play here we're we just going to try and see out this victory i'm gonna just shout another get creative as about five minutes to go now of this game. Can we see this out and claim our first three points of the League One season? It would appear so. Oh, hang on a second. Do not speak too soon. Marlon to Oz Tuma. Don't lose the ball now, lads. He takes a strike and that is a beautiful effort from Erhan Oz Tuma. I don't think he scored for me last season. However, what a finish that is from the Turkish player. It hits the pause and that's... Oh, that is, ex that is fantastic. What a finish from the edge of the area. And that is going to seal three points away from home on the opening day of the season. Well done. That was a very good victory indeed. I don't think Ostuma literally scored for us last season. But I've decided to keep players like him. Um, because League One is a, is a lot more of their level. Players like Erhan Ostuma, he might be two and a half stars. But he is decent. In League One and is good for backup options. You can see 6.63 championship. He had a dreadful season, but off the bench, he can be a good player for us this season. That will round out the episode, I think, for season two. I hope you have enjoyed it indeed. I'm going to play quite a lot of games off camera because, as I say, this season is all about trying to get this club straight back up um, into the championship. I don't want to stagnate. In League One, so I might play quite a number of games off camera with, uh, you know, games coming thick and fast in League One. We will try and, uh, you know, play a lot of games. I do believe off camera. Um, anyway, as I say, if you've enjoyed it, do hit the like button, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not clicked the subscribe button already. And I will catch you for the next episode of this Charlton series very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.